Hello, chemistry students. It is another problem solving sessions video. In this particular problem, we are going to focus on chapter eight, which is quantum mechanics. There have been several different types of quantum mechanic problems in your book, some dealing with electromagnetic radiation, some with the photoelectric effect, some with atomic spectroscopy, and some with the energy stored in electrons as they either absorb energy from the outside or release energy as they fall down to lower ground states. So we've discussed all of this and now this particular problem is going to use Rydberg's equation that we use for the Bohr model in line emission spectroscopy to solve for transitions between energy levels. So again we've seen this, we could see it um, when we saw examples of electrons falling all the way down to the energy level of one in the case of hydrogen, and that would result in an emission of light from the ultraviolet region. That's part of the Lyman series. You'll see with our spectroscopes and in lab, because we're viewing the line emissions within the visible spectrum, those are dropping down to a principal energy state our quantum number n equals two, that's part of the Balmer series. If it was a little bit less energetic and only dropping down to the third energy level or principal quantum number n equals three, it would only be within the infrared region of electromagnetic radiation. So what do these problems look like? Well, first we need to review, again, the energy of a photon and then also the energy within Really, I could write atom here for the hydrogen atom and that one electron, the change in energy between the energy levels. So we can measure that change in energy levels based on either the emission of absorption, absorption of light that that electron requires. So how can we combine these two equations? Well, we use the energy of a photon, which if you recall, energy of a photon of light is Planck's constant times the frequency of light. But we also know that the speed of light is equal to wavelength times frequency. If we want to rearrange this and solve for frequency here, we get the speed of light divided by wavelength is my frequency, and I can now substitute that here. We also get from Rydberg's equation how to determine the change in energy of an electron between energy levels. So how much was absorbed? In our case, typically when we use spectroscopes, we're seeing them drop down to lower states. How much is released or emitted? So because we're talking about the Bohr model and the hydrogen atom, we're going to use the Rydberg constant that's appropriate for that, which is 2.179 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. So here's an example problem. A spectrum for hydrogen shows that there is a relaxation for principal energy level n equals six or quantum principal quantum number n equals six to a lower energy level. So this is a relaxation or you can think of an emission. So what does that mean? Uh, my initial state is in an excited state, energy level six, and the electron will be dropping down to a lower energy level. So we want to know what that lower energy level is, what that final energy level is. So how can we do that? Well, when it drops down, because of the law of conservation of energy, you can't create or destroy it. You can only transform it. As this is falling down, you can think of it as a form of potential energy, it's releasing a photon of light. So the light happens to be, have a wavelength of 7,460 nanometers. So let's figure out where it ends up. So we're going to use this equation. That's also why I rearranged, you know, energy equals Planck's constant times frequency because I was going to give you wavelength. I'm going to use the Rydberg's constant. And I'm also going to convert, if you look, I'm going to convert the nanometers into meters for this calculation. So why do I need to convert the nanometers to meters? Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times second. 
speed of light, roughly three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Again, these are two constants, but I needed to convert this to meters for wavelength because I need the meters to cancel. And then the per seconds cancels with the Planck's constant times second, and I'm left with joules, which is exactly what Rydberg's constant gives me. And I know that my initial state is n equals six. So my initial state is six, and I'm looking for where does it land, nf. So I figure out that this quotient right here, when I do the math, is this number. I divide both sides by Rydberg's constant, and I set it equal to the difference of these two quotients. Now I want to solve for the final energy state. So once I do the division here, I get this number, and I need to add 136 to both sides to solve for the reciprocal, or one over the final energy state squared. And I get that number. When I add 136 to the quotient 0 0.0122 value, I get 0 0.0399. And now I need to solve for NF squared. So I have to do my algebraic manipulation. And I get this. And because I don't want it in terms of square, I want it to actually be an integer or rather a counting number. I take the square root and I get five. If this is not close to uh, integer, then your math somewhere is wrong. It has to be, because remember your principal quantum numbers, right? They can be one, two, three, four. So it has to be an integer. So what does this mean? That based on the wavelength of light that was emitted, the transition was from the sixth energy level down to the fifth. Now that's not a big drop. That's not a lot of energy released because it's only from the sixth to the fifth. And realize the biggest energy difference is from the first to the second, and then they get smaller. Um, so why is it not a lot of energy? Well, if you look, the wavelength is really long. It's 7,460 nanometers. In the visible spectrum, it's 400 to 750 nanometers. So this is a really long wavelength. It's way outside of the visible spectrum. So what does that mean? Well, we said that energy of a photon is Planck's constant times speed of light divided by wavelength. So the energy is inversely proportional to the wavelength. So if the wavelength is really long, there's not a lot of energy, and that makes sense. This is a long wavelength. This transition isn't a big difference, so there's not a lot of energy. So I hope this makes sense, not just doing the math and solving these types of problems, but it also makes conceptual sense because the book has quite a few of these. Tests typically have a lot of these, and you'll see them um, uh, in your textbook and in your homework. So. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. You can email me directly or post them on Ask a Question discussion forum. Thanks so much for watching this week of problem solving sessions.